A few weeks ago, I made a video on how to take effective meeting notes in LogSeq. And now it's the turn for Tana, because in that video, I spoke about how Tana might offer you some affordances that LogSeq doesn't that might be helpful in your workflow. So in this video, I'm going to break down some of the features of Tana that might be very helpful for you. And I'm also just gonna look at some of the drawbacks just so that you've got awareness of what it is to look out for. Another quick word, this is going to be the last video that I'm doing in November. So this is why I've got this ridiculous little mustache. Uh, the fundraising campaign is not going very well, but if you wanna give a little contribution below, there's the link in the description. I'll also be donating 10% of all course sales in November to an organization that has helped me. So that's another way to contribute indirectly. I'll speak more about the courses at the end of the video though. So I don't wanna hash over the same topics that I looked at in the previous video, but I quickly wanted to explore what are some of the dimensions of effective note-taking in meetings at least. And the first one there is effective planning of meetings. And that just is like thinking about agendas, outcomes, just having some structure with which you go into your meeting with so that you know what you're gonna talk about and that you can you know, make things happen. The next one there is being able to reference prior or related notes. Your notes are only useful to you if you can resurface them and reuse the information. And then that's the last point there is also related to that where I need to track action items, decisions, and insights. I spoke a little bit in the last video about how insights might be a little bit funny to structure, but it's there just in case you want to think about it. And yeah, I'll show you how you can go about that a little bit later. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open up a meeting example on the right of my screen. And I'm going to then look at why Tana might work better for you on the left by just going through point for point over here. And the first point is that Tana is collaborative. So you can have a shared workspace in your team that everyone is able to reference. So if I look here, for instance, let me go to my workspace. I'm just going Dario da Silva and I say show workspace options, allow content from demo. So I've, I've ticked that option there. So it allows me to bring in content from other workspaces and also use the super tags from those workspaces and then move it across to that workspace once I'm done with it. Now, I'm not gonna get into all the complex features of Tana here. I'm just trying to show you a little bit of a roundup of why it is so useful. So that is really important. Let me go back over here. And then the second thing that you can do is you can just publish your notes. So if you see here, this note is published. This is a new feature in Tana. And if I go and click there, I can say view on the web. That's actually a good idea. So if you can't share with someone in your organization because they're not actually on Tana, you could also just share this link to the meeting notes, or you could share it with an external organization. The next thing that you see here is these structured inputs. So this over here is a field, and then in a field, I can add some information that enables me to structure that node. So this is almost like adding information in your columns of a table. So if you imagine like you've got an Excel grid, where you've got your rows and you wanna add information, and they become very intuitive later down the line once you start working with them. So if I actually go to this meeting here, let's jump around a little bit, I love doing this. You can see here that I've got the meetings and then all the fields that are relevant for that meeting. Let me go there. Okay, so it's not very many over there, but yeah, it just shows you that the fields are like adding columns in a table. Okay, so that enables you to really structure your inputs very nicely. And yeah, that's actually what I just showed there is a super tagged page where I then get a list of meetings where I can filter and very easily retrieve what it is that I'm looking for. Another thing about fields is that I can then name the node based on the field. Now that's a little bit more complex, but again, with, well within our remit, if I control shift click there, I get the, the schema, how I define that meeting super tag. And as I've said in other videos, a meeting or the super tag is basically saying, it's creating a database of things. So I'm saying this is a meeting, it goes into the meetings database. And here we go, I can say build title from fields where then I can then change the name. So topic of meeting is my second meeting. And you can see there that it's automatically updating over there. And in this specific one, I've also got a calendar date from day, which is actually a little bit superfluous. I'll, I'll show you why a little bit later, but then I'm putting that into the name as well so that I can see when the meeting was. So there's a whole bunch of ways to structure information so that it's very easy to display it or just to find what it is that you're looking for. Okay, the next thing that I wanted to show is the calendar view. So if I look at this, or if I look at my own workspace, let's uh, have a look here, let's open there. I can, 
I've got this agenda node, which I like using, and I can then drag and drop this meeting onto a calendar view. And it immediately adds the dates over there. And this is great for time blocking and planning. So very intuitive to use as calendar view. Unfortunately, there's not integrations with your major calendar providers yet, because I'm sure someone's going to ask that. But very nice to just move things around and yeah, do some nice planning of your day. I don't want to get into diversions, but there's you can do that with a node that I created. So I created an agenda node where I just move things around, or you can do it in a search. So you could search for all your meetings and then move your meetings around. Let me just quickly look at that because that, that could be cool. Let's add a view here. Let's say calendar view and then say, there we go. That's a search of all my calendars and there are my different meetings. Okay, so getting ahead of ourselves. Very cool functionality though. I just wanted to show you quickly. Simpler queries. Okay, so you just start a query. There's a number of ways to start queries, but really you can just say uh, shift question mark and I can say create a search node and then I can very easily just build a visual query over there. But I can also say control command K to open up the menu bar. So control K and I'm going to say find nodes with the tag meeting. Let's say from that workspace demo as a list. And there we go. Very easily I can find all of those meetings and then I can filter those queries super easily. So what does it relate to? It relates to example project one. There we go. Very simple, very nice and intuitive to use. Okay, the next thing here is the ability to tick things off. And I have the option to show super tags as a tick box. Now when I'm keeping track of things, I like to think of this difference between things I need to action and then reference items. And Tiago Forte has a great video on this, which I'll link to below, just to help you separate things from what is reference and what is action. And on my action items, I have things we decided, decisions, or maybe um, we need to tick off something when we decide it, things to discuss. Uh, so that would be like, I use the word inbox for like to discuss with someone. And then tasks is obviously a, a task to do. Editing Dario has come back and just added another example here because it wasn't really landing. And I've added this demo task. Now you can see here in my tasks super tag page, I've got that demo task to do. If I just click that off, it disappears from there. Okay, I want it to disappear. So let me say tasks that are not done and then run once. There we go. And then my done tasks will appear here. Now, something which I had to go do here just to make it work 100% is in my demo page or in my demo, sorry, workspace, I had to make sure that I allowed content from Dario De Silva because this demo task over here is actually entered in my own workspace, but it's using this task super tab which I should probably have named better for this demo, but it comes from this demo workspace. This tasks here is from my own workspace. If I just hover there, you can just see my name. But the way that I distinguish my tasks in this example here is that my tasks have these buttons, which is just another feature of Tana. It's a command that enables me to change status. I think a lot of people go overboard with commands. It's a personal opinion. I think really just keeping things as, as simple as possible is great. And uh, yeah, I like to have mine clear and text so they know exactly what they're doing. The emojis distract me. And then reference items. So here I could say I have this note that I could then link to something and then this other thing, which is an insight. So then if I open this up here, I can say what it relates to or something which I actually like to do is to use tagged concepts. And I'll speak a little bit to tag concepts later so that I can actually retrieve that information. And then Something which is really cool is having an agenda, like maybe I want an agenda field or maybe I want an agenda query to find other items in my workspace that are being tagged with agenda. But it's not necessarily one or the other, it's both and. So in here, I've got this agenda node, which comes from the super tag template. And I've got the search node, which looks at any agenda items that are related to grandparents. Now, I haven't got one in the specific thing. Let me actually go and find my agenda node, or let me just go say control S agenda. No, not that one. Agenda. Agenda. There we go. Um, add search view over there. And ah, there we go. I haven't I haven't related it. So you're gonna see over here when I add that relates to field, my second meeting, let's say this thing over here relates to I'm getting a little bit lost in the weeds here, but anyways my second meeting, second meeting. And I just say done there. 
that suddenly pops up there. So it's like this, this idea of information flows to where you need it is super helpful. But maybe I don't have that or system already perfectly built out and I can just go into that field and say this other thing to do. So I've got both ways to retrieve information or enter information. Very helpful. If I go back there, just some of the advanced field functions, auto initialization is great. Okay, so I've got here this relates to field, which is an instance of another super tag. And this is just something in my own setup, which is building for repeatability, which I'll speak to later. But I can auto initialize to an ancestor with this super tag or to a value from an uh, ancestor with this super tag. So what does this mean? This, if I say auto initialize to ancestor with this super tag, and then I now say tasks, hashtag tasks, and let me just say this thing to do. If I go in there, it says it relates to my second meeting. So what that's saying is it's saying this relates to field must take the ancestor with this super tag. So my meeting super tag is an, is an extension of my relationship super tag, as is my task super tag. So this having this relationship super tag enables me to very easily map relationships as I go very quickly without having to have multiple different fields. The second thing to do there is if I change this to be to value from ancestor with this field, you're going to see here if I say hashtag tasks, another thing to do. It's now going to pick up that it relates to this project. Why is that? It's because in this, this field, there we go. It's got an ancestor with this field. Okay, so lots of complexity there. This is really on the advanced side of the field functions. Don't worry too much about it. It just gives you a lot of affordances. Now, the thing here that I like to say, let me just close this up over here, is that you don't need plugins. I am sure you could do a lot of this stuff with LogSeq, with Obsidian, with whatever, but having an all-in-one interface that enables you to do everything in Tana is very useful. And, it, and I feel like it's just more robust. It will work longer term. Okay, so that's the things that might make Tana better for you. Let's have a look at some things that you, well, I don't like. And the first thing that it's really worth drawing attention to is that there's a lack of offline access. So if you need to take notes on an airplane, if you're going away for some time, you don't have internet, Tana won't work. Now this sucks, but they are working on it. And honestly, it's one of those trade-offs that you have to make. I find enough benefit that the, little, the few times that I've been offline, I don't worry too much about it, but that could be a deal breaker for you. The second thing is that it's cloud data storage. So it uses Google Cloud Platform. They're using uh, Firebase. So this isn't my biggest issue, but I've just received so many comments that talk about, oh, if it's cloud access or if it's not open source, so time is closed source, then it's not for me. Well, that's the caveat there. I don't find that to be too much of a problem. Speaking to that point, I know a lot of people will probably ask, but it's still uh, invite only. I haven't received my invite. That policy has changed. All you need to do now is join the Slack community and introduce yourself in the channel and you will receive an invite. So yeah, it's not invite only. And then, well, it is, but you have to do that process first. Then lack of natural bidirectional linking, hence my tag concept. I wanna speak more about this in another video, but if I wanna talk about a topic, let's say I want to talk about science, talk about, um, I can't, if I say square brackets, which is what I'm used to for LogSeq, it says use at to make a reference. So I say at, and let's say science, let's see, science, and let's just say control enter and it creates a node. So if I go to that node, control click over there, I can see here, I've got these backlinks over here. Well, I've got the, the, the bi-directional links, but it's not like as natural as using other programs. And there's no filters, that sort of thing. So yeah, I'm, I'm not too big a fan of this. It doesn't feel like super easy to, to add information. That's why I use the super tag tagged concept so that I can easily map something from my existing database. Okay, but that's a little bit nuanced and in the weeds, so yeah. I'm gonna say here another point is that there's a steeper learning curve to other programs, I think. Um, especially if you're not familiar with Notion. But if you're familiar with Notion, if you're familiar with LogSeq, you'll probably pick up the hang of things quite easily. Tana have invested a lot in their user onboarding, so it really is a pleasant experience, I think, but that might not be the same for you. So I just wanna make a few quick recommendations. 
don't be tempted by the complex workflows that you see online. Even mine might be a bit too complex for you. I received a comment which said this is far too complex. Fine, make it simple. For me, it really works. And if you don't believe that, well, I can't convince you otherwise. But yeah, you probably won't use most of the things that you build. So if it's fun, do it. But don't try and build too much too soon. Like let your use cases evolve. The next thing I would say is set up structures that scale. So use the inheritance of super tags or by extending them. So um, I've said, if you set up repeatable structures, you'll be away to the races. So that's why I use that hashtag relationship super tag, which is then extended throughout my database or my workspace. And that really helps me to build these repeatable structures that map into one another. And yeah, so I can do the things that I want to do. And then I guess a similar point, build repeatably. Um, don't automate too soon. That should be up there. But anyways, um, nodes for a person. So what does this mean? Let me actually just go here. Control S. I'm going to say person. And then, yep, that's the right schema. So sh uh, control click opens it up in the right. And then let me add a search view over here. These are all the different people that I've, I've got in my database. And then if I click on this James person over here, I've built this. Let me actually just click in here. Control shift click opens that. And I can see here that I've got a standard set of queries that come up for any one tag with person. And then I can go and click this to see any items. So I've got these little dashboards that are very easy to, to find the information that I want. So yeah, helps to track things. Lots of power in how you can build things in Tana. So one thing that I have been guilty of doing in the past is saying, I'm going to look at this and I don't just because I'm human. But this is an example of the published notes. So hypothetically, I have meeting notes, for example, project one. And what I've done here is I've just created a search node, which then looks at, let's look at the query, all meetings that relates to example project one. And then I publish this node, and then I go and I publish those bottom nodes as well, which is a little bit of a hack in order to get this thing working properly. But if I go and then view on the web, it should have them both all linked, but for some reason it doesn't. So, but then it would enable someone to go and then click on this project or the, those meeting notes and then those meeting notes as another link. So yeah, that's just a nice way to be able to share your notes with others. And I realize I'm skipping so much, but yeah, for that reason, I have made a course which looks at Tana in detail, if that's the sort of thing that you want to go into. If you are someone who is using LogSeq and Tana, I've also bundled the two courses so that you can buy them at a discount. As I said, for the month of November, if you purchase a course, 10% of that will go to a good cause. So please help me make this thing worthwhile. Otherwise, you can just contribute a small amount to the little donation that I've got going there. Thank you as ever for watching. I am working on a number of videos which look at combining LogSeq and Tana or just talking about these tags. They're going to be a little bit more discursive like this. They're not very structured. As I said, I'm moving away from that sort of style where I'm trying to have these perfect tutorials online. If you want perfect tutorials, buy a course. Otherwise, I'm just chatting over here. So hopefully the chatting is helpful to you.